Okay, so I am stuck in a hotel room for the next seven or eight hours before going to bed. I have quite a bit of time tonight, so we're going to talk about some stuff. So on this particular video, I'm going to be addressing one of the things that came up several times in the comments on my previous videos about the situation with the, uh, I guess I'm not going to, I guess forced upgrades for Windows 11 is the, the wrong word. It's forced, <clears throat> um, it's forced prevention of install of Windows 11 on older hardware. They're not forcing you to upgrade your older hardware. Technically speaking, I should be fair about that. To be completely fair, they're not forcing you to upgrade your old hardware. However, they are forcibly preventing you from putting the current version of Windows, which will always, almost always, I guess. I guess there's been some outliers, but generally speaking, your best bet for most usefulness of Windows is the current version. It just is. Um, and you can like Windows XP or 7 or whatever all you want, but the fact is it gets harder and harder to use Windows as it gets further out of, um, out of uh, support. <clears throat> um, so this particular video, what we're going to talk about is what exactly is different this time? Because there have been times for a great example would be Windows Vista. Um, Microsoft back in 2006 uh, six months or maybe a year before Vista came out, they started offering a Windows Vista Ready program. And they would slap a sticker on the computer that said Vista Ready. And when, though, when, it, when it came out, when the OS actually hit the market, a lot of those computers couldn't actually run it. Actually, I should probably do a whole video about this. But to make a long story short, the hardware simply did not support it. Because you have to keep in mind, back in those days, a budget computer was a Pentium 4 with 512 megs of RAM, okay? Some of you probably don't even know what a Pentium 4 is, okay? So, um, yeah, there's that. And it, it, it basically, it couldn't run the OS. Not, not really. <clears throat> um, so, but here's the, here's the difference with that, okay? Here's the difference. The difference is you could load Windows Vista on hardware that technically could not support the OS. Microsoft did not say, we think your computer's too old, you can't load our OS. They did not say that. There was no, there was no hard kill switch. Turn off my phone here so we're not getting text messages. There was no hard kill switch in the OS. You could, you could load the dang, in fact, I think I saw, I think if I remember right, I actually may have tried to load it once on a Pentium 3. And it, I, if I remember right, it did load. <clears throat> so there was no there was no switch in there that said, "Well, we don't we don't approve of the specific experience you're having, so you can't do it." If you wanted to do it, you could do it. That's changed with Windows with Windows 11. What they have done, so we are clear, there is a physical, I mean, software as physical as it can get. However, you want to split hairs. Someone's going to split hairs on that, but. Um, there is a physical kill switch in the OS that, I don't know if, I don't know if kill switch, I don't know what, what, quite what the wording is, but it's basically a kill switch where it, when, it, when you load the OS, um, <clears throat> it scans your hardware and it says, okay, your computer can support Windows 11, your computer can't support Windows 11. And if it can't, it simply says, we're sorry, your computer does not meet the minimum requirements for Windows 11. Please try again later when you have better hardware. And that's, that's really what it says. That's totally different. To the best of my knowledge, again, there's always somebody that's going to find some outlier, but to the best of my knowledge, Microsoft has never put in a hard blockage to prevent the OS from loading. Now, if they had done what they're doing today with Windows Vista, it probably would be good for us. People probably wouldn't have hated the OS so much. But the roles are completely reversed. See, the thing with Windows 11, as many of you have found, is it runs if, if you use the workarounds. We'll talk about that on a different video, why needing workarounds and hacks and cracks or, or jerry rigs, whatever, why I think that's not the way to go. Or at the very least, I don't... I don't consider that a viable alternative, and I'll, I'll explain that in a different video. But unless you, I'm sorry, those who do that have found, it, from what I've seen in the comments, it appears that fourth generation Core i7, which corresponds to 2013 and 2014, um, so 4770K, 
is 13 and 4790K is 14, 13, 14. Um, but people seem to be finding that that hardware, that generation of hardware runs it great. And actually the second gen, fourth, <laughs> second gen, fourth gen, let's call it that. The, uh, the, I think they called it Devil's Canyon refresh, maybe. When you got, when you went from the, the 70K to the 90K chips, um, those were uh, corresponded, supported with uh, Z97. Z97 was the first, uh, it was either the first, it was the first regular consumer platform, to the best of my knowledge, that supported M.2. X99 was, it was the same architecture, but it was kind of a different thing. But for normal consumers, Z97 was the first support for M.2. So you can today, now some of the boards don't fully support M.2 NVMe, if I remember right. Um, but on the nicer boards, you can drop, to, I believe, today's M.2 NVMe drives. It's not going to be as fast, so you're not going to go buy like the Gen 5 or whatever. That would be a waste of your money. But uh, a generic M.2, like a, like a Crucial P3 or something like that, you can drop that on one of those. And if you have that system paired with even like, like an older 980 Ti, 1080, even like a 2060, 2070, that is still a killer system. That is still a system that most people I know would they'd look at that and they would think, oh my God, you've got a crazy gaming system going on there. When we all know that this is 10 year old hardware, but to most people, that is still good hardware. Don't even get me started on people in other countries that don't have access to what we do here in the US. My heart does not bleed, but at the same time, I mean, to some places in the world, that's you know, especially like like in some countries in Africa, it's hard to get good. It's hard to get newer hardware in some of these countries. So something like that, it's not e waste. That's top of the line hardware to some people. Um, certainly shouldn't be out of support, and people are finding that that hardware supports Windows 11 just fine. From a from a functionality perspective, my my experience is if it, if if Windows 10 runs and is a usable experience, Windows 11 will run and be a usable experience. But no, we all know what actually happened. There are going to be people that come on here and dispute me on this, but we know what actually happened. Microsoft and probably their hardware vendors are not satisfied with the rate at which hardware is obsoleting. They do not like that you can buy a computer that is 10 plus years old because keep in mind, to most of these companies, two to three years is the life cycle they want you on. They want you replacing your computer every two to three years. That's what they want. But the quality on the hardware has gone so good at this point that they've, in their opinion, shot themselves in the foot, and now the hardware is too reliable for that. That's, that's my take on it. That is why I believe that the situation today is different than what has happened with, um, with previous-gen hardware. To, to simplify it as, as simple as I, can, as I can make it, they're unhappy with the natural rate that the hardware is obsoleting at, and they have decided that they are not going to wait any longer. They are going to obsolete the hardware themselves because it's not happening naturally fast enough. So anyway, I hope you guys find this kind of an interesting look into um, why it is what it is, and uh, we'll talk about some of the other factors on a different video. Thanks for watching.